Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your beloved body began to breathe out of the sun. There's no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your blood.
a happy and blessed new year to you and to your family. I hope you had a wonderful and a meaningful time together. By the way, the virtual Christmas cantata is still viewable online. So if you still haven't watched it, what are you waiting for? Watch it with your family and share the link to your friends. How fast time flies! It's already 2022 and my gray hair are beginning to take over. At the beginning of each year, people write resolutions, goals, or targets. Mine is to have a haircut. Do you also do that? No, I mean not have a haircut, but make goals. Were you able to meet the goals you had last year? I hope you did. It's good to have goals, but it's even better if we have spiritual goals. For the past months, we have been talking about growing together in Christ. That's a worthwhile goal, right? We've been learning how gracious God is, that He would give us a new life in Christ, and that His grace sustains us and makes us grow in Him. We learned how much God loves us and that Christ's love compels us to no longer live for ourselves but for God out of love for Him and for His glory. We also learned that we need to be disciplined in pursuing this worthwhile goal and that God also disciplines us and trains us because He loves us. We learned that the Holy Spirit is the agent in the process of transformation that each of us goes through. And in this new year, we hope that we will all continue to make it our goal to become more and more like Christ, to grow in our faith and love for God. We need each other to move closer and closer to this goal. How are, you, how are we going to reach this goal? Well, we need the Word of God, the Bible, the primary means of growth that God has gifted us with. Psalm 1 verses 1 to 3 says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. The Hebrew word here, which is translated into blessed in English, has the idea of being happy and being content. The righteous person is happy and content because he or she is right with God. The person who does not think like the wicked, who does not behave like the wicked, and who does not belong to the company of the wicked will be a blessed person, a happy and contented person. This doesn't mean to say we don't engage with unbelievers or that we must cut all ties with the world because it's full of wickedness. Instead, this is a matter of desire. Do we desire God? Do we desire His Word and His ways more than anything? This is a matter of allegiance. Do we belong to God? Or do we still belong to the ruler of this wicked world? This is a matter of becoming more like Christ. Do we still conform to the patterns of this world? Or are we being transformed? by the renewing of our minds. Psalm 1-2 says, The blessed person who does not think, does not act, and does not belong to the wicked, instead finds happiness, finds delight in the law of the Lord. 
this blessed and happy person is so preoccupied with God's word that what he thinks about day in and day out are God's words. Verse 3 shows us the result of this constant meditation and constant delighting in God's word. The blessed person grows like a tree planted by streams of water, meaning he is always nourished by the word of God as a tree that is constantly nourished by life-giving waters. The blessed person yields fruit in season. This means that the blessed person blesses others with his spirit-filled character, with his actions, as a tree is expected to bear fruits during the season of harvest. And whatever the blessed person does, prospers. The Lord grants success to the child who delights in his word because his goals, his motives, the desires of such a child of God are aligned with God's will. This is not a promise of riches untold in gold or silver. Rather, this is a promise of being blessed, being happy, being content as we go out and set to do God's will done in His ways. Now we see how a child of God who delights in the Word of God is blessed, happy, and content. God has given us nothing less than His very words to guide us all throughout our lives on earth. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is God-breathed, and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. This reminds me of when God breathed life into the nostrils of Adam in Genesis 2-7. God's life-giving breath breathed out these life-giving words. And this reminds me as well of when God created all that there is just by speaking them into existence. No wonder we feel more alive and vibrant when we meditate in God's Word. No wonder we are rebuked when we are at fault and we are shown the correct way when we sin against God. Because these words are the words of a holy God. No wonder God's Word sustains, trains, and empowers us to persevere because He also sustains all of creation. How do we take full advantage of God's life-giving words in scriptures? Well, you know the answer to this. Read or study, meditate, memorize, and even teach and apply God's word. Spiritual growth does not happen by knowing about these things, but it is by actually doing these things. Reading, studying, meditating, memorizing, teaching, and applying God's Word. Read. Read the Bible every day. Acquaint ourselves with Scripture. Know the whole story of the Bible. Make it a goal to read the Scriptures this year. Study. Let's go in depth into the Bible. Dive into the text. Know the context or the full picture where a verse is a part of. Know what God is really telling you. Not the other way around. Not what we want God to tell us. We study the Bible in CYF, so let's keep joining CYF this year and even invite our friends or even our siblings. Meditate. Let's continue to think about what we have read or studied from Scripture. Let's go about the entire day looking at things through the lens of Scripture. Let's be conscious of God's presence day in and day out. Memorize. Let's commit to memory God's word. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart 
that I might not sin against you. Just as Jesus treasured up scripture in his heart and used it to fend off Satan, we too can do the same. Teaching. Let's teach others or tell others about God. You don't have to be a teacher to tell others about God, right? Tell them about the love of Jesus. Tell them about the forgiveness, the hope, and the peace that Jesus gives to all who puts their faith in Him as the Lord and Savior. Well, you can share the Christmas Cantata link. And there you go, telling others. Apply. Let's put God's words, what we've read, into action. All of these things that we've read, studied, meditated, and even memorized and taught others. God is not pleased with mere hearers of His word and who do not give any effort to actually practice them. Are you as overwhelmed as I am of all of these things? Do you feel like you will never perfectly do all of these? If yes, well, I would say that is a better place to start than to be so self-assured. Why? Because it means you know you are weak and limited. You know that you don't always desire or delight in God's Word. I myself can be like that. This awareness of our fallen human condition should bring us to our knees and plead for God's forgiveness, plead for God's help, run to God, our mighty defender, our protector from the arrows of temptation. We live, we live rather, by the grace of God that disciplines us and trains us in righteousness. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27 says, Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. No athlete wins an Olympic medal just by training only when he wants to without putting the hard work or the, in the court or in the gym. Elite athletes are disciplined in what they eat. They are disciplined about their sleep. And they are disciplined even with what they allow their minds to think. Paul compares our Christian walk to that of a race. And we are compared to elite athletes under strict training. But the difference is the price that awaits us is not a mere wreath worn over our head one day and then wither the day after. The prize God has set before us is a crown that lasts forever. Athletes compete against, against each other to win the top prize, but we help each other instead. And each of us gets the same prize. We are all winners in Christ. Jesus has already secured the victory for us. Jesus is our mighty champion. We just need to fix our eyes on Him, fix our eyes on the goal, run the race, and cross the finish line. Do you want to be blessed this 2022? Do you want to be happy, content, and right with God? Well, I'm sure you do. First, Surrender your life to Jesus as your Savior and Master. If you've already done so well and good, praise God for that. But this doesn't mean we can just all forget about the gospel of Jesus. Let's always keep in mind that we have been bought with the highest price and we are no longer our own. We belong to God now, our holy and loving Father. 
Next, we must live by God's word. Be that tree which is planted by streams of water. Read, study, meditate, memorize, teach, and apply God's word. What is the alternative if we don't do this? Well, if we think, if we behave, and if we belong to the wicked, what do you think will happen? Let's continue reading Psalm 1. Verse 4 onwards says, Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. But the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Chaff is the husk or the covering of a seed or a grain. They are easily blown away by the wind. In contrast to the mighty tree whose roots bury deep into the ground, the wicked are easily deceived by the enemy. Their lives waste away with no foundation in the eternal words of God. The wicked cannot stand before God in judgment, but the child of God stands before God's throne, forgiven and justified in Christ. The way of the wicked leads to destruction, but God watches over His children. He will sustain us. He will continue to mold us to become more and more like Jesus. He accomplishes this process of transformation in us through the Holy Spirit and the Holy Scriptures, the Bible. God is faithful, willing, and able to complete the good work He has started in us. This 2022, let's make it our goal to anchor ourselves in the Bible and to grow together in Christ.